welcome to the Oaklerds YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going back over that little ghost doggy zip pouch poo bag holder. Today we're gonna do it though in a four by four inch hoop on a single needle embroidery machine. So this is the four by four hoop version of that pouch. Now I don't actually have another one of the pouches we previously made, those have been sold already, but this is a, a smaller version and in my opinion, it is adorable. So this was the first one I made, vinyl exterior, and you can see this time our embroidery design is on the back panel. So the front panel previously had the embroidery design right here, but since we're using a smaller hoop, you have to get a little bit more creative, and this time the zipper is kind of on the back. So you can see we just have a simple zip pocket right here, open it up, there we go, and then we have a little tab over here, and then on the front we have that beautiful design, with the hole, once again, for us to put our little poo-poo bags in. So this was the first version I made, and in this version I did it with my X-Acto knife where I just cut that little cross intersection. I finally made a version with a grommet, and you guys, I am hooked on this grommet. Look how adorable this is. So in today's tutorial, we will be going with the grommet installation, just so I can show you that. I do have a large rivet press which can be used as a grommet press to set these large grommets. One thing I want to note is that if you want the interior to be fully lined, I really do think you have to go with the grommet route. If you want to go with the satin stitch route, you can add lining on the back of the zip portion, but I could not quite figure out how to arrange it so that we could have lining with the portion with the hole. So. I'm going to show you the grommet version just because I've already shown you how to do the little cuts with the X-Acto knife. The grommet version I think is a very, very professional look. You can see I even put a little swivel hook up top. And this is just so you can just clip it onto your leash. A lot of leashes will have like a little D-ring up by the handle. You can just clip this on that D-ring and you're good to go. I have some poo bags here so let's put it in and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see you just put the poo bags in the zip pocket over here and then thread them through that hole, either with a satin stitching or a grommet. Pull it through. You can zip up the back to hold it in place. It fits perfectly. It's a perfect size. I don't know, I kind of think I prefer the smaller version over the bigger version. So, this design, once again, is from Off With Their Threads Embroidery. This is the ghost dog pattern. And let me just tell you, if you haven't already checked out Off With Their Threads, go to Off With Their Threads, go look at all the doggy poo bag holders. And I will have a link for it down in the description, of course. There are so many versions and like every breed of dog and like every character you can think of, they've gotten so creative with this. It is mind blowing and it's just like never ending. You just wanna make them all. But I'm once again gonna stick with my ghost doggy because I do love him. And as you can see, it's a very scrap friendly project. This was a lot of scraps here. So in today's tutorial, we will be making one of these exactly with the cork and the white vinyl and the grommet. And this version is fully lined. So if you want a really professional look, I do think this is the way to go with the grommet and the full lining. It's very professional. Add a little keychain or a swivel hook up top, and this would be great, great for gifting or selling this holiday season. So once again, thank you so much to Off With Their Threads for allowing me to use their patterns in my tutorial. It is so much fun making these in the hoop designs. Today I will be making it on my brother PE800. It is a more affordable single needle embroidery machine. I got mine off of Amazon. I will have a link for it down in the description of this video. So far I've been very happy with this. I've only made a couple projects, but it has not given me any trouble whatsoever, so I can highly recommend it. If you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shoutouts, anything at all you wanna say, leave them down in the comments section. I will have timestamps, there's really not a whole lot to this. It's a very fun, quick, easy project, but extremely satisfying. Like I said in the first video, it's one of those projects that reminds you why you started doing all this in the first place. Why you bought an embroidery machine or, or bought some cork or vinyl. Like, 
why, in, when you first started, why did you even want to start? It's because it's fun. It's just really fun to make these things. So this is a fun, fun project, extremely useful for all the dog owners in your life. I know some of you have also said you make these and you clip them on the inside of your diaper bag and you keep these poo bags in there for dirty diapers. I think that is brilliant. So you have a lot of fun options with this because you can just clip this inside your purse I mean, how adorable is that? How adorable is this? All right, guys, let's get started. Okay, so like I said, I will be using this Brother PE800. This is a fantastic beginner level embroidery machine. It is only an embroidery machine. It is not a sewing machine, but it's going to make most of your projects. The hoop it comes with is a five inch by seven inch hoop, but for today's tutorial, we will be using a smaller one. So you can see that this one over here is the four inch by four inch hoop and this one is the five inch by seven inch hoop. The machine comes with the five inch by seven inch hoop and that's it. I did buy a set of extra hoops that includes an even smaller one, a four by four, a five by seven and a larger hoop. So I think this set is a pretty good value for all the hoops you get, but I know a lot of you have a single needle embroidery machine that only can work on a four inch by four inch hoop, which is why I wanted to show you this tutorial today on a four inch by four inch hoop. So here are some of the main materials. We will be using tearaway stabilizer today. And then here are my threads. I have an assortment of threads. I have some Madeira, I have some glide thread, and then I've also got these really fun glow in the dark threads. Of course, I'm making a Halloween kind of themed ghost doggy. We've gotta have some glow in the dark threads. So I'll have links for all this down below in the description. To help with these larger spools, I do have a separate spool stand, so I'll set that up because my machine can definitely hold these small ones but for these bigger threads I'll use a thread stand. So here's the stuff to make the bag. You're gonna want about a fat quarter of your exterior vinyl, of your contrast vinyl for your little doggy, and then also for the lining. So I'll be using this cork for the exterior of the bag and then I have this really sticky white glossy vinyl for the ghost. Sticky vinyl is tricky to sew on but it works pretty well with embroidery machines. And then for the lining, I've just got a piece of quilt cotton here. You can see it's just a scrap. Uh, you don't need much of anything here. I will do my best to kind of give you a general idea of measurements. But with in the hoop embroidery stuff, we don't really have precise measurements. It just needs to be big enough. And then I have a number three zipper. This is zipper tape here, but it's a number three. We want to stick with the number three because it's really the space we have for the zipper. And then I have a zipper pull to go with it. Okay, here's all the other stuff. So if you're gonna be using a satin stitch, like this dog right here, where you have the little hole with the satin stitching around it, and you're either gonna cut out that hole entirely, or you're gonna be doing a little cross like that, you're gonna to wanna to use an X-Acto knife. It's gonna be a lot easier to kind of just trim this all down, especially if you're doing this plus sign. So I have an X-Acto knife kit here. I'm not gonna be using that today, but I just wanted to show you in case you were interested. Next, I have my flash drive. Now this has all of the files. I'll be using two files today from Off With Their Threads Embroidery. We will go over that, but we have one file for the actual pouch and a separate file for just the design. So we will walk through that. You're gonna wanna put them on a flash drive and then stick it into your embroidery machine. You're gonna want both of them on hand. Next, if you're gonna go the grommet option, which is the way I'm going, I have 12 millimeter grommets here. I get these from Cam Snaps, and then I have my grommet die set. So this is the setting set to set this in the bag. And then it also has a hole punch, and the hole punch just punches the hole for me. So it's super fast, super easy. And of course, to install all of that and cut out the hole, I have my Cam Snaps rivet press. Next, I have a rotary cutter, a seam ripper and stiletto, a marker for marking on vinyl. This is a turning tool. It is the best turning tool, trust me, it is. You have very tight, small corners here. It's going to be a beating on your nails. It bends my nails, so this tool helps a lot with those corners. Applique scissors, because we do have applique here. Some thread snips and some tweezers. This is kind of like these three items here, the applique scissors, the thread snips, and the tweezers, this is like every embroidery project, I have to have these on hand the entire time. And then I have some scotch tape. All right, so as you can see, I have my flash drive installed over here on the right of my machine. So I'm going to turn on my machine and then I'm going to click right over here on the little USB icon, just like that. And you can see I have two files here. This file is just for the bag and the separates file, which is a little bit hard to see because the outline is in white, but this is just for the applique design. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this in a few different pieces. So the first step here is to open up the 
zip pouch design. Now I will have links for all of this down below. There is a separate purchase for this with multiple sizes for this zip pouch. So I'll have all the information in the description, but we're gonna click on that and then click set. There we go. And now what we wanna do is we wanna to go to step nine. We don't wanna start from the beginning yet. We're gonna go straight to step nine. And here's how we do that. We're gonna to go to edit and then embroidery. And then we're gonna click these little needle plus minus sign over here. And then we're gonna click the plus sign over here. And up here on the top right, it's gonna tell you what step it's on. So it's on step two. We wanna to go to step nine. So we're gonna go all the way up and you can see there's 10 steps total. So we're gonna go up to step nine. There we go, and step nine of 10 and click OK. That's the only step we wanna run right now. So now let's grab our tearaway and we're just gonna cut a piece of tearaway that's big enough for the hoop. So I just lay my hoop over the tearaway and then trim it just like that. Keep your tearaway close by. We're gonna have a second piece we're off to cut soon. All right, so now we're just going to hoop this. So there are little arrows on our inner hoop and outer hoop. So I'm just gonna lay my tear away over the bigger hoop. Make sure the arrows line up just like that. Push it down and then tighten this little screw over here. Okay, now I'm going to install the hoop in my machine. So now I'm going to quickly thread this red thread. Um, the first stitching that you're going to really see is going to be the little leash on the front of the dog, this little piece right here. So if you wanna use that color for all these steps before then, that's the color to use. I always like to use the thread color that's going to be seen first. That way I can switch out colors as few times as possible, but this will be the color right here, this little leash, that will be your first color. I'm just going to be using red so that you can see what I'm doing better. So I always like to put the little netted jacket over my thread first. And then I'll just put my thread on the spool holder. And then I like this really tiny cap here. This all comes with the machine. And then I just put that in there, kind of tuck it into the spool. There we go, keeps it nice and safe. And now I'll just quickly thread the machine. This is one of the easiest machines to thread. There are numbers everywhere. There's like six things you do, it's so fast. Okay, so now I can put the foot down and everything looks good. Remember, we are stitching out step nine for the small four by four zip pouch. And we're just gonna click the green button. And we're stitching out this design on only the tearaway. We do not have any vinyl there yet. Okay, great. So this gives us placement for a later step. So now what we wanna do is go to our applique file. So going back to the machine, I'm gonna go back out of this design Okay, and I'm gonna go back to the, my USB, and now I wanna click the applique design, and then click set, and then edit, and embroider. There we go, I don't have any changes I need to make. So now we're gonna start with the applique. So I cut a piece of my exterior cork that is the width of cork, which is 12 inches by five inches wide. So I just have a five inch strip here, and now I'm gonna cut off another piece from the bottom here that's five inches. So now I have my back piece, which is what I'm gonna applique on, and this is five inches by five inches, and I can save the rest of this for the front of the bag with the zipper. So all we have to do is take our exterior vinyl and lay it over our stitch out, and make sure it extends all the edges. Make sure none of these raw edges are like right on the edge. You want it to extend everywhere. And then we're gonna run the first step of our applique, which is just going to give us an outline of where our dog is gonna go. If you need to use some tape, go ahead and tape down this piece here. Okay, so now I have a small piece of my white vinyl. This is going to be for the body of the dog. This is about four and a half by three and a half, just a scrap piece. Just make sure it's big enough to cover your outline of your dog. So now all I have to do is lay my vinyl over that outline, making sure it's covering all of the edges really well. I am going to grab some tape and I'm going to tape down the corners. Okay, so now we're going to tack down this vinyl. So now we're gonna remove the hoop from the machine. So make sure you lift up your presser foot and then take it out. What we wanna do here is cut out around our stitch out. So. This is an applique, which means we're gonna have a really beautiful satin stitch that goes around all of the raw edges. So using my applique scissors, I'm going to just pull on the vinyl and cut 
as close to those stitches as I can all the way around. And I'm only cutting through this white vinyl. I am not cutting through my orange cork back there. We don't want to cut that. And I'm cutting as close as I can to my stitches without cutting my stitches. If I do nick them here and there, that's okay. You just don't, you don't want to cut them all off and then you don't, you don't have your design stuck to your exterior anymore. So for these kind of tighter nooks, I just go around those and then I'll come back to them. And do the easiest pieces first. So I always do a pretty messy first cut around the stitches and then I'll go back and clean it up. You really wanna cut as close to those stitches as you can. So that way when the satin stitching goes around, it completely covers the raw edges. If you leave too much vinyl, those raw edges are gonna stick out. So now I just kinda go through and slide my applique scissors under like corners. And then I'll cut at a different direction than I did originally. That helps get really into those tight spaces. For some of these really skinny tight spaces, you don't have to worry too much about it because the satin stitching will completely cover like this little area right here between his front paw and his back paw. So the next step is going to be for that little leash right here going in front of him. At least I think it's a leash. It looks like a leash to me. But for that one, I'm gonna use this green glow in the dark vinyl. And since it's a little big, I will be using my thread stand. So I just plop my thread on my thread stand and then I will feed it through this little loop up top and then I make it nice and long. So you can see I have my thread stand standing right in front of my embroidery machine. So all I have to do is pull the thread through the top there and I will thread my machine like I normally do. So you can see I still have my red thread up here but I have cut it and I have removed it from the needle. And now I'm just going to completely thread the machine just like I normally would except now I have my thread on a stand just in front of my machine. Okay, so now that my machine is threaded, I can run the next stitch, which is for that, what I think is a front leash. All right, once that's done, the next part is gonna be for that collar. For the collar, I am going to switch back to my red thread, so all I have to do is cut this, pull it out of the needle, and re-thread my red thread. Always make sure to lift your presser foot when you're re-threading, or else it's gonna be really difficult to pull that thread out from the needle. All right, let's run the next step. So the next step is going to be the satin stitch around the entire dog. So for that, I have this white glow in the dark thread, which I'm very excited about. So once again, I will be using my thread stand for this thread. Okay, let's run this satin stitch. This is probably the longest stitch. That's handy dandy. My machine just told me my bobbin thread is almost empty. That's awesome. Most of my machines do not tell me that, so I'm gonna replace that bobbin real quick. Yep, and look at that. Just a just a few few rounds left on it. That's it. Lovely. Alright, bobbin is changed. Let's go back to the stitching. All right, once that step is done, I like to take this out of the machine, but keep it in the hoop, and just trim some of these jump threads. So you can see we have a few different threads here. I'm just gonna trim those down before we move on to the next step. The next step is going to do the little tongue on the dog, so for that I'm gonna use this hot pink. Okay, so now let's run the little tongue step. Next up we're gonna do the eyes and the mouth, so for that I'm going to use the black thread. Okay, I'm gonna quickly trim up these jump threads. Okay, so now we're on step eight, which is going to be the placement stitch for the nose, which is going to hold the bags. So for me, I'm only gonna run step eight, and I'm gonna use that to help me install my grommet, but I'm not going to run step nine, which is the satin stitch. 
Okay, so if you wanted to do some sort of a lining, now it wouldn't be a full lining because the seams would still be exposed in the end, but if you wanted to still kind of line the back of this and you were doing the satin stitch, you could take some of your quilt cotton and just spray it wrong side down, so right side up to the back of this, and then cut out this circle and then do your satin stitching. And then you would have the appearance of a lining inside the bag but like I said, you would still see the seams in the end. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to do a lining on this if you're not doing the grommet, but I am doing the grommet. So this is the end of my applique. I'm done with that. I'm not doing the satin stitch. I'm stopping here. So I'm gonna take this out of the hoop. Now I'm not tearing away that tear away stabilizer. I'm leaving it there. And I'm going to look at the wrong side of my design. So this is where I have that outline. Remember that outline we did on just the tearaway? I need that now. So using that outline and a ruler and a rotary cutter, I'm going to line up my ruler so that I have a quarter of an inch overextending and I'm going to trim down all of my material a quarter of an inch along each of these four edges. And this is gonna help me in the very end, making sure I don't get any of my design cut off in the bag. All right, there we go. Now we have the back of our bag ready to go. You can set this to the side. I'm actually using a piece of the scrap from that for the little tab that will go on the top of the bag. I'm not going to be using any hardware when I stitch it all together. I'll add the hardware afterwards. But you can use the scrap from that piece for the tab later. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the bag portion. So cut yourself another piece of tearaway. And let's just hoop this tearaway. And now let's put this in the machine. So now going back to my files, I'm going to get out of our applique, go to my flash drive, and then get the pouch file. We're gonna set it, edit it, embroider it. Now I'm gonna be using one thread color for all of this. This is my orange thread, so I'm gonna go ahead and install that now, and I, that way I don't have to do any thread changes later. All right, so we're gonna run the first stitch, which is going to be just on the tear away, and that's gonna provide placement for our zipper. Okay, so now I have my zipper and you're gonna want a seven inch or longer zipper and you want your zipper pull as close to the edge as you can get it because we don't really want this involved in the stitching. And as you can see on our design, we have this inner rectangle right here. That center line of the rectangle, that's where the zipper teeth need to go. So when we line up our zipper tape, it should be the exact same size as this rectangle, width wise. It should be the same width. Our zipper is gonna be a lot longer though. So we're just going to line this up. Your zipper should be overhanging on both sides. Make sure that zipper pull is way out of the way. And then we can just grab some tape and tape our zipper down. It's okay if the tape covers the stitching. It's okay if you stitch over this tape. There we go, we just don't want it moving on us. So now I'm gonna put this back in the machine. So now we're gonna run step two, which is just going to tack down our zipper so we don't have to worry about it moving around when we add the other pieces. All right, the zipper's in place. I am going to cut out this tape real quick just so it doesn't cause a problem later. Okay, so now remember I have those extra pieces of my cork that were from the other cut. I just cut it into one piece that's about five inches by four and a half inches and the other one is five inches by about three inches. And first we're gonna start with the top piece which is the smaller piece. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up right side up and your raw edges will be against the zipper here. And we just want it to cover the stitching that tacked down the zipper. So when you line this up, make sure it completely covers the outline of your bag and then it covers those top stitches right by the zipper. Grab some tape and just tape that in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom as well. So with this bigger piece here, just make sure it covers the stitching on your zipper and then it completely covers the bottom and the sides as well. And then once again, I'll grab tape to hold this in place. All right, now we can put this back in the machine. Okay, this next step, step three, is going to tack down the top edge of our cork right above the zipper. And I don't know if you can see, but I did not quite get my cork down long enough. You see how the stitching didn't quite get all of the edge of my cork? I want it to, so I'm gonna unpick this real quick and shift my cork down and my bottom cork up just to get really close. I mean, I'm gonna probably have it touching the coils just to make sure I don't miss it. If you made the same mistake and you used vinyl, you should be able to just flip it around or you can just get your ruler and just shave off this edge where the little holes are to get a nice clean edge. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in and try that step again. So the nice thing on this machine is if I need to go back, I'm just gonna go down one to the third step. There we go. And I can just rerun that step. Okay, that's better. So now I'm gonna run the next step, which is going to tack down the top edge of the bottom piece here. Okay, so the next two steps, steps five and six, are going to help provide placement for the lining pieces. So I don't have to add anything, I don't have to do anything, I'm just gonna run steps five and six. Okay, so let's take this out of the machine and work on the lining. So from the lining, I have two cuts, uh, one about five inches by five inches and the other one about five inches by four inches. And then on the back, I just folded down one of the straight edges by about half of an inch. There's really no precise measurement here. You just need to fold it down so you have a nice, clean, non-raw edge fold here. So let's flip our unit upside down. Okay, so now remember that this line right here in between these two thicker rectangles, that is our center line where the zipper teeth are. So we wanna remember that. Take our top lining and we're going to lay it right side up so that the folded edge is running right along that middle line. Not right on top of it, you don't need to cover it, just get it fairly close to it, about an eighth of an inch away from it. Make sure your lining is completely covering the sides and then grab some tape and tape this lining in place. And you might wanna over tape here because you're not gonna really see this when it's stitching it on. So I have the top piece taped. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom piece. I'm just gonna lay it right side up and just about an eighth of an inch below that little stitch that lets me know where my zipper teeth are. And then I'm gonna tape this in place. And if you're worried about this all moving around, you can always grab your masking tape and just tape right over where it's gonna be stitching. We can pull it out of the stitches when it's done. So now I have the bottom all ready to go. I'm gonna put this back. When you're putting it back in the hoop, just keep feeling around to make sure your lining isn't getting caught up on anything. Is it moving anywhere? There we go. And then I like to just check it all the way around. Looks good. Okay, so then the next step is going to stitch down the lining on the top portion here. And then step eight is going to stitch down the lining for the bottom portion. All right, let's take it out and give it a look. Okay, that looks great. It caught all the lining everywhere. And now we just have to remove this tape before we move on. Okay, so let's just pull up this masking tape and get it out of here. I like to take the masking tape out of stitches as soon as possible. I know I could wait until a later step to do this, but I, I just like to get the tape out of the stitches quickly. Find we have less problems with it if we do that. All right, so before we put this back in the machine, grab a ruler and a marking tool. And what we wanna do is we wanna mark a quarter inch away from the outline of our stitches. So I'm just lining up my quarter inch mark right on these stitches here. And then I'm gonna take my vinyl pen here and I'm just gonna mark a line. It doesn't have to be perfectly all the way around. We just wanna have an idea on each of these edges where a quarter of an inch away is. So after you have those lines marked, you can remove this tape, you don't really need it anymore. And now take your zipper pull and put your zipper pull about halfway in. Nice and gentle here, there we go. You know what, while we're here, we might as well cut out the tear away over here as well. So you wanna take the tear away out where your zipper is. So this little hole between the top and bottom linings, go ahead and just remove that tear away. You might find it easier to open your zipper and then just kind of push it out with your finger. There we go. You might wanna use your tweezers to just pull it all out of the stitching. You can also cut that midpoint thread that we were using as a guideline. It should not really be attached to any fabric. So now we're pulling all this tear away out so that way when we're done with the bag, we can push it through the zipper. If you forget to push the tear away out, it's gonna be pretty difficult to turn your bag right side out through that zipper. Okay, so we have a couple things we're trying to keep an eye on here. First, get your zipper about halfway between the ends. Make sure it's not off the edge. I did it, don't do it. So let's do that. And now grab your little tab and fold it in half, wrong sides together. And we're gonna just center it on the top edge of our pouch. This way we can easily have it hanging from the top like that. I'm actually gonna tape mine down so that the stitching is about halfway through the zipper tab. So I have quite a bit of overhang over here. If you have hardware attached to this, like a swivel hook, you're gonna to wanna to also tape down that hardware to the center of your bag. You wanna make sure it does not get in the way. 
But remember, the folded edge or the hardware side is pointing down towards the center and the raw edges are up here on the top. So I'll just tape that down like that. And now take that back piece where you've taken the tear away off. This is your applique design and you're going to lay it right side down and you're going to do your best to line it up with those quarter inch marks that you made around the outside of your back panel or the panel with the zipper. So it should, if it doesn't line up perfectly, that's okay. Just try to get it mostly centered. It's going to be a little tricky because you've got bulk here with the zipper and maybe some hardware. So you can't get it perfectly flat, but just do your best and then tape it down. So the goal here is that when we stitch this in place, we don't cut off any of our applique design. I just use lots of tape to help with this. All right, let's put this back in the machine. So now we're gonna run step nine, which is going to completely sew down this back panel to our front panel or your front panel, however you wanna look at it. It's, it's gonna sew down the applique design panel to the zipper pocket panel. And remember, everything is right sides together. All right, now let's take this out of the machine. And once again, I wanna quickly take all this tape out of the seams. Okay, here we go. So the last step is going to be attaching the lining on the other side. Now this is why I said if you did the satin stitch, you're not gonna be able to do this step because if you did the satin stitch and you already have a hole here where the nose is, if you attach a lining back here, it's just gonna cover it up and you're not gonna have any access to that hole. Since we're gonna be cutting the hole and adding a grommet after the bag is completed, we can do the lining with a grommet. But otherwise, I don't think you can add a lining here using this method. Let me know I mean, if you've done it or if you have any ideas, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Okay, so I have another piece of lining material. This is about five inches by six inches. I'm gonna flip my hoop so the hoop is upside down and I'm looking at the lining that's already attached. And I'm gonna take my last piece of lining and lay it right side down. And it just needs to completely cover all of the stitching. And there should be a good amount of overhang. Don't have it right on the edge of the stitching. You want a generous amount of overhang here. So you're laying your lining right side down. And then I'm just gonna once again grab my tape and I'm gonna tape it in place so that it does not move at all. All right, there we go. Our lining is prepped. Let's flip this over and put it back in the machine. All right, once you have it in there, just make sure none of your tape is peeled up or anything. Go all the way around. All right, there we go. So this is the last stitch. It's gonna stitch the lining in place and it's gonna leave a hole over here on the bottom so we can flip it all out right side out. All right, the embroidery machine portion is done. You can take it out and take it completely out of the hoop. So just check everything real quick. Looks like the lining is good. Let's take it all out. So now you can just go around and pull out all of your tear away. All right, looks good. So now we're gonna grab some scissors and I'm going to do the sides and the top. I'm gonna to cut those down to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So really all I have to do is kind of just go right along the edge of my back panel here. And then I'll round off those corners as well. And then I do trim down the tab on the top and then round off the next corner. Make sure I got the zipper tape. And then I'll just go straight down like that. So now I'm gonna look at the back here and I can see this little opening that was left in my lining and I wanna look at that. So I'm going to round off the corner and then once I get to the edge of that opening, I'm just gonna kind of go straight off like that. And then on the other side, I can just go straight in. And then when I'm about a quarter of an inch away from those stitchings, I can go and round off that corner. The point of this is that I wanna leave this tab here. Now that, not this big, I'm gonna cut this down to about three eighths or half of an inch just like that. But I want this tab for my lining and my exterior because that's gonna help me close up everything in the next step. All right, so I've got my turning tool and my little baggie here and now we're just going to open it with the two lining pieces and gently turn this right side out. Because this is so small and my vinyl is a little stiff, it's tricky. And I found when I did the swivel hook, it was very tricky. So go sit down <laughs> and take your time with this. You don't want to rip your lining. All right, now that's tricky. There we go, we got it. And we're, we're flipping it so that it's lining right sides out, not the whole unit yet. Just the lining right sides out. If you have a turning tool, you might want to use that to just help get everything 
as it should be. It doesn't have to be perfect along the top here, but we need to have it pretty good down here on the bottom so we see exactly where everything goes. Okay, so now we have it lining side out. And what we want to do is we want to tuck in our lining and exterior and then the other side of our lining as well and tuck it all in. Now, if you're using any sort of heat and bond here, you can just cut yourself off a piece of heat and bond and pretty much just use the heat and bond in your iron to glue this shut. If you want though, you can also do it at your sewing machine. So I just kind of pull it all up about an eighth of an inch. I know I've got some raw edges here peeking through, but I do it just about an eighth of an inch. And now I'm just gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch right along this edge. That's what's easiest and quickest for me. But if you're more comfortable with the heat and bond, then use that. Okay, there we go. I've got it sewn shut. It's not pretty, but it's closed, so it'll be fine. So now I'm going to open up my zipper the rest of the way. It can be a little tricky. And then we're going to flip the whole bag out through that zipper opening. Again, gently, you can rip the stitching around your zipper. You don't wanna do that, it's nice and gentle. It's a little guy, but he's worth the work. All right, and then once you've got it flipped out, take your turning tool and we can just push this in to get those corners nice and popped out. Look at that. And then these top corners, those are the little, kind of like little buggers, but you can just plop this in there. There we go. Nice and gentle. Oh yeah, this looks adorable. If you have any little threads peeking out, go ahead and trim those. All right, there we go. So now the little pouch is complete. The last thing we have to do is add the grommet. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is punch out this hole. So I'm going to use my hole punch for that. This is the base for the hole punch. And then here is the hole punch for the 12 millimeter grommet. So I'm just gonna install that. And I'm very careful to make sure I keep this bottom zipper pocket out of the way. So I'm just gonna pull it out and kind of wrap my whole unit around this bottom die. And then I'm gonna slowly lower down my die and I'm trying to get it centered so I don't push it all the way down, I push it down mostly. And then I peek over and take a look from all the angles to make sure it's centered. Once I'm happy with it, then I can push the whole thing down and it's just gonna pop out that hole for me. There we go, and now we have a perfect hole popped out through the lining and the exterior. So I can remove the hole punching die tools. And now I'm gonna take my grommet setting tools. Again, this is for the 12 millimeter grommet. Okay, so for the grommet, we have one piece that's like a cylinder and another piece that's just flat. The cylinder piece goes in through the front, just like this. And you might notice your lining is kind of going all over the place, that's okay. Because we're gonna lay this lining side up, exterior side down. So we have a better view of the lining this way. Make sure you move the zipper out of the way. Then take your flat disc and lay that over the hole. And now what I do is I just move the lining around to make sure none of it is peeking through the metal because I don't want that showing up in the hole. And once I'm happy with it, I'll gently push down my press to hold the grommet in place and then I'll push it down to set it. There we go, perfect. Look how cute that is. So we can just zip this up. And it's so quick and easy, especially with the grommet. The grommet looks so professional and it's just so much easier in my opinion than cutting out the hole and doing the satin stitch. I just love it. And you can have everything completely lined, which just makes it look amazing. All right, there we go. We've made another one of these little cute, cute, cute pouches. I love these so much. They are so scrappy. If you have an embroidery machine, they come together very easy. This is a perfect first in the hoop bag project. So I know embroidery machines are used a lot of times for like embroidering on quilts or embroidering on shirts or hats. You know, we think of embroidery machines and we think, oh, well, like adding a little customization, adding a little floral detail, that's really nice. But we don't normally think of making a bag in an embroidery machine. I know that's still kind of a wild concept to me. So this is a perfect little bag for you to start with, especially if you bought yourself a four inch by four inch hoop embroidery machine and that's the biggest it can you know, embroider on. 
This is your bag. You're going to love this. It's just so stinking cute. Look how cute this little guy is. I love it. So as you can see on this one, I left off the hardware. You can always grab like a keychain, a little keyring. You can add that on there later and then clip it onto whatever you want. There's lots of options. You don't have to commit to the hardware when you're sewing it in place. As you can see on this one too, since my tab was a little bit longer, I did go ahead and add a rivet there. I know a rivet press is not something that everybody has, but I'm telling you, it is such a time saver. It makes so many things so much easier. I mean, that satin stitch is beautiful. It really is. I love the look of it, but this grommet here, this grommet looks so good and it is so durable and it's just so easy. I don't have to worry about cutting out the hole. I don't have to worry about the, I mean, it's just easy. I love that. And it allows me to have a fully lined bag, which just makes it look, it makes it look very professional. So as always, thank you so much to Off With Her Threads for allowing me to use their patterns in my tutorial. I love this little guy so much. I promise we will get away from the ghost dog. I know we keep making the ghost doggies, but he's just so cute and I love him. But we will move on to something else. They have a new one that they just came out with the other day where there's like a sanitizer holder. And I don't even know. I, I, I needed to finish this but I'm, I'm probably buying that pattern tonight. I hope you love making these as much as I do. If you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comment section. Like I said, if you have some tips for how to fully line the one with the satin stitch, let me know down in the comment section. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.